Unlocking the mysteries of autism and providing new hope for the families and individuals facing its challenges are missions shared by dedicated scientists across the country and around the globe. But despite an overwhelming need for answers, this disorder has not given up its secrets easily, as illustrated by Nancy Minshew, a leading autism researcher at the University of Pittsburgh. The first thing is autism is so complex that there's not going to be one thing. But what everyone has to realize is that our entire brain, our entire body, all started from the coding instructions in that one cell that came from the merging of the sperm and the egg. And so all of the instructions for every single thing at a molecular level was contained there. So that must be incredibly complex. We can figure it out, but it's going to take us time. We need samples in some areas, six, seven, ten thousand people. We're never going to get that at one site. And so development of networks has shown us over the past 10 years that we can pool data across sites of various kinds and have very powerful impact. With the support of five institutes and centers at the National Institutes of Health, the National Database for Autism Research, or NDAR, was created as part of the federal response to address the needs of scientists studying autism. The goal of INDAR is to make available to scientists all of the human autism data now being collected, ranging from molecules to genes to behavioral, social, and environmental interactions. These data are being collected not only at NIH, but also at private organizations and international research efforts being conducted around the globe. Together, they will provide far more research data than any one lab could collect on its own. Through this effort, INDAR is enabling scientists to better understand autism and thus helping accelerate scientific discovery, as Portia Iverson, co-founder of Cure Autism Now, explains. It's kind of like when you go in uh, to a, a pediatrician in a, in a medical system and then you go to a specialist and another specialist and all the records are centrally located and they can all pull them up on their computer. Another thing to consider is that... Uh, the kind of scientist who might want to work on autism but is absolutely daunted by the cost of collecting samples, of getting this type of information together, which is very, very costly to get one of these collections together, um, that problem becomes very uh, diminished and it's no longer really a huge obstacle. And so it also creates an opportunity and motivation and incentive for more researchers to get involved in the field of autism research. INDAR's goal of collecting over 90% of subjects' data related to one area of research is the first effort of its kind attempted on this grand of a scale. Such an attempt requires the active involvement of the research community, but especially those individuals and families consenting for their information to be shared with many scientists. Ed Cook, an autism researcher at the University of Illinois, Chicago, sees how family and individual support of INDAR serves as a cornerstone for meaningful future research. For those that volunteer, and I've, I've found uh, families with, with uh, people with autism or families with people with autism to be extremely generous in their time in volunteering. And... Um, I, I think people understand that this is how we're going to know more. The progress may be slow, but especially in the context of younger children, you know, they may benefit from the research in terms of new treatments. At Baltimore's Kennedy Krieger Institute, Dr. Paul Law serves as director of the Interactive Autism Network. He's also a parent of an autistic child and sees the value and reach of Endar. As a research participant myself, I'm thrilled that INDAR exists and that when uh, I participate in a research project, that data is being taken to a central place uh, and well cared for and connected with all of the other projects I've participated in, in a way that researchers can make the most use of it in, in improving the quality of life for my son and for my family. It is important for potential research participants to know that while their data may be shared through INDAR, their identities are not. 
Before any data are shared, all information that could be used to identify a research participant is removed. Research participants are assigned a code, a global unique identifier, or GUID, which allows researchers to access information from individuals participating in multiple studies without knowing their identities. Qualified researchers who want to study autism can ask to see the information in INDAR, and all requests are carefully reviewed by a committee of experts in protecting scientific information. As a parent of an autistic child and a member of the INDAR team, Gretchen Navidi understands and appreciates privacy issues along with the need to pool data. I think it's important to share information that could potentially help others but I'm also very concerned about um, protecting my son's identity. And um, with the GUID, I feel completely secure that it's based off of personally identifiable information. Uh, but that information never goes beyond the researchers that we're working with, so nobody else knows who we are. I, I think that a single person participating in any kind of research isn't going to be able to provide enough information for researchers to answer any of the questions that they're asking. But when you start with one person and then you add another person and then you keep going, you end up with a large enough group of people. In my family, it started with my son, then I participated and I got a GUID. And I think it's really important for other family members to participate and get a GUID as well, because there's so much that can be learned about autism from comparing affected and non-affected individuals, especially within a family. If you later decide that you no longer want to share your or your child's information in INDAR, simply contact the researchers who did the study, and they will tell INDAR. INDAR can stop sharing information from that point on, but any information that was already shared cannot be retracted. The INDAR centralized database is making a difference for families and researchers. As INDAR matures, so too will our understanding of those living with autism. It's important to recognize how much progress has happened in the last 10 years, but then to realize we have to have patience because it is complex to keep going. The answers are there, and people have mobilized to look for them. All of us, every parent, would really, you know, like to see some discoveries start to be made about the causes of autism. There will undoubtedly be many kinds of autism, but, um, you know, that's what, what we're waiting for. And by participating in something like ENDAR, we're making a real contribution to speeding up that happening. The key thing that ENDAR has to offer families is that their desire to contribute uh, to autism knowledge and treatment for not just their child but for everybody um, is going to be maximized by having that data brought into one place. It's a long road, I have to say that about autism research. We have exciting moments um, and, uh, and, and it's hard to predict them but, but the, there, there's no question that participation by uh, people with autism uh, and family members um, is essential to moving forward. To learn more about the National Database for Autism Research and how your participation is helping accelerate scientific discovery, visit the NDAR website at ndar.nih.gov.